Deputy Louise O'Reilly, question 64, please. Uh, thanks very much, Ken Corley. Uh, Minister, my question, as indeed I'd say is probably all my questions, are uh, relatively simple. Uh, it has to do with the recruitment and retention crisis and in light of the fact that nurses and midwives have uh, rejected the results of the, or at least those in the INMO have rejected the results of the Public Service Pay Commission. Uh, it doesn't strike me that anything concrete has been done to address this that is working, and I'm sure that you will list whatever it is that, that, that you're doing, but it doesn't appear to be having the desired impact. Thank you. O'Reilly, um, for the question, as Minister for Health, the recruitment and retention of nurses and midwives has and remains a consistent priority for me. Challenges do exist around recruitment and retention uh, of these professions. That's not new news to you that that's my view. I know it's your view. And there is a, we're operating in an environment of a backdrop of a global shortage when it comes to nurses and midwives. However, despite these challenges, the data shows that we have managed to increase the number of nurses and midwives employed. And I don't think that should be lost uh, from the debate. When the number of nurses and midwives employed by the HSC is compared between this September and last September, it shows that there has been an increase of 1,050 whole-time equivalents, including student nurses. Without student nurses, though, the increase is 1,039 <coughs> whole-time equivalents. The Deputy refers to a statement in her question made by the HSC in their annual report for 2017, which in many ways confirms what we already know, that we are operating within a competitive recruitment market when it comes to filling positions involving health professionals, not least midwives and nurses. I do believe that the recent pay proposals put forward were a positive step towards making the public health service a more attractive place to work for nurses and midwives. Firstly, the Public Service Pay Commission recommended a 20% increase to the specialised qualification allowance for nurses and the location allowance for nurses. They also were to be extended to our maternity services. In addition, the Commission recommended recommended that the eligibility for a senior staff nurse or midwife be reduced from 20 years to 17 years. The government's proposals, o government also proposed uh, to address the issue of new entrant pay, not just for nurses, but right across the public service, and this would benefit around 10,000 nurses to the value of around €3,000 each. So I am, I am sorry that the uh, INMO rejected these proposals, but I do very much respect the outcome of their ballot. On foot of the Public Service Stability Agreement, government is making very considerable resources available to increase public service pay, including in respect of nurses. This is on the basis that this agreement is honoured by all the parties involved. I understand that the INMO will consider its next steps when its executive meets on the 5th of November, but I would like to see all parties, including my own department, coming together during the intervening period to see if there is a way forward. Industrial action is not something which any side wants to see. It's not something that patients uh, want to see. I know it's not something that nurses want to see, and I would hope that engagement could take place between nurses and their employer in advance of the 5th of November. Thank you, Minister. Deputy O'Reilly. Minister, I have some small knowledge of industrial relations between nurses in this state, and I can tell you, you uh, if you don't acknowledge and address the issue of pay, you are leaving nurses and midwives with absolutely no option. I know, you've said it, it's known out here, the last thing that they will want to do is contemplate industrial action, but that involves you giving them another option. Uh, you referenced the Public Service Pay Commission as a, uh, I think you called it, a positive step. 94% of those balloted in the Irish Nurses and Midwives Organisation are after rejecting it, so it is not viewed as a positive step by them. Minister, do you acknowledge that pay is a factor, not allowances or any specific element of pay, actual pay, what you and I call pay, what you have in your back pocket at, uh, after payday, not any one specific bit of it that might apply to you and not apply to your colleagues. Do you acknowledge that pay is central and are you going to take any steps to address it? Thank you, Deputy Minister. What the government is going to do is respect the Public Service Stability Agreement, which we asked public service unions to sign up to, which they signed up to, and which the Irish Congress of Trade Unions signed up to. I understand that the INMO is a member of the Irish Congress of Trade Unions, and I understand that all parties to the Public Service uh, Stability Agreement have signed up and have agreed that there would be no cost increase in claims for improvement in pay uh, for the duration of the agreement. So that's what the agreement says, Deputy O'Reilly. The agreement that was signed up to by the unions says that there will be no uh, increase in pay above and beyond what's already spelled out in the agreement. This is only a new agreement, and if we start on picking this agreement at such a very early stage, I don't think that says much for honouring agreements that have just been agreed. We asked the Public Service Pay Commission to do a body of work. We asked them on an expert basis to come together, to analyse data, to hear from all sides, to receive submissions and to make recommendations. They made recommendations. They made recommendations that would have put more money in the pockets of many of our nurses and many of our midwives. And on the top of that, uh, pay also 
pay rises for <coughs> new entrants, um, which is an issue that does need to be addressed. I respect the INMO ballot. They have made their decision in that regard. I want you, to be engagement with them in advance of the 5th of November to see if we can find a way forward, but one that respects the public service stability. It's a very important point out of the Public Service Stability Agreement. It was in other agreements, including the one that was uh, reneged on by Fianna Fáil, which is that the parties reserve the right to go back to the table and renegotiate if the circumstances change. Now, they were quick enough to go drag us back, actually, because I was, as my dad say, back in my tools at that stage, drag us back to the table when circumstances changed uh, to, uh, to insist that there be negotiations on the subject of pay cuts. Now, circumstances have changed. We are facing a recruitment and retention crisis, and all of our talk of slauncher care, reform and everything else will come to nothing unless we have the staff to deliver it. Nurses and midwives are the single biggest cohort within our health service if we don't acknowledge that the agreement and by the way, other trade unions outside of the INMO are now calling for a renegotiation of that agreement, just as Fianna Fáil did uh, when they felt the circumstances were right with another agreement. So there is scope there to renegotiate, Minister, um, and I just would like to hear something more positive from you in relation to nurses and midwives' pay. We passed a resolution here where we all agreed that pay had to be central, not for a small group or a section Thank or you, a, a single cohort, but for all nurses and midwives. Thank Minister, you. to conclude. Look, I don't want to uh, engage in, in a back and forth in relation to industrial relations matters on the floor of this door for the very reason that I do want there to be serious engagement between my department, the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform, where appropriate, and the INMO in advance of their executive meeting on the 5th of November to see if there's a way forward. But I, I do say I have to... I have to respect an agreement that all public servants, or certainly the vast majority, have signed up to, called the Public Service Stability Agreement, uh, that ICTU uh, has very much signed up to. Um, that is only a new agreement that does see many benefits for people across the public service. I accept that there's a recruitment and retention challenge, particularly a retention challenge uh, when it comes to people working in the health service. There are a number of measures uh, in place to try and assist with this in the Public Service Pay Commission. I would have hoped that they could be accepted and then we could have further engagement along the lines uh, that the Public Service Pay Commission references already in its reports. You're right, uh, we need more nurses working in our health service. They are key to the delivery of stranger care. I do hope a resolution can be found, but that is going to require engagement that takes place in the context of respecting the Public Service Stability Agreement. Thank you,